Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Copy and Headlines, our daily get-together live here on Facebook, where we look at headlines from Puerto Vallarta, our state, the state of Jalisco in Mexico, and we combine those with all kinds of tips and comments and suggestions that we can get our hands on so that we can have an amazing life here in Puerto Vallarta. As a community of English-speaking locals, it is April 20th. It is 420. So today is Taco Tuesday because it's Tuesday. So Taco Tuesday and 420, does it get any better than that? I don't think so. It is always a pleasure to see you. And if this is the first time that you're joining us, uh, that would be Luna. That is, hello, yes, I'm talking about you. This is my assistant who is very much awake and enthusiastically taking notes. And my name is Paco. If you are new, just let us know by writing the word new in your comments. And we'll make sure to give you a proper welcome. We have some news today that we want to share, of course, and there's some important stuff. There's some interesting stuff, and then there's some decoration-related uh, <laughs> news that I want to share with you today. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at who's joining us. I see a lot of familiar faces. Hello, Kelly. Happy 420. Uh, Claude, happy 420. Uh, let's see who else is here. Rita is joining us from Fluvial. It's great to see you, Rita. Um... Oh my goodness, it's snowing where Sherry is. That is such a contrast. Are we going to find out where to get 420 tacos, says Dave. Well, I don't know about 420 tacos. I can tell you that I don't know where you can get 420 tacos, but I certainly can maneuver the notion of getting 420 and then getting tacos and having them together. But I'm sure you can do that as well. Um, let's see who else is here. Uh, good morning from Anaheim. Two more days and I'll break out the Paco Taco map. <laughs> it's going to get so fat. Look at me, John. I've been seriously concerned about my weight. I'm going to start doing something about it, but not today. Today we have news to share and it's great that you're coming here. Um, James Binder asks, what happens when Taco Tuesday and 420 coincide? Well, I wish I could tell you, but I something tells me that I won't remember a thing. <laughs> uh, Dan and, and Kathy are heading up to San Diego tomorrow. I had the pleasure to have of having a farewell lunch with them yesterday. Dan and, her, and his wife, Kathy, are two of the beautiful blessings that I've received from Coffee and Headlines. They live just down the street, and, um, and we met, and we hit it off, and that's what I've enjoyed so much, I'm, among many other things. Um, about this project and this community that you've created uh, getting to get to know some of you has been a real treat during the past few months and i'm very very grateful for that uh let's see let's see libby's happy to see luna's beautiful face luna is kind of like meh i'm here <laughs> um we're gonna get started shortly um but um, as always, if there is something that is particularly important for you or something that's on your mind, please help us 
find it in your comments by adding the letter Q at the beginning of your comment and we'll be happy to discuss as long as it's relevant to what we're doing here, of course. Um, Mark, you just sent me something through Messenger and unfortunately I'm not powerful enough to read my personal messenger and do the broadcast at the very same time, but I promise I will give it undivided attention as soon as we are done. Uh, let's see, let's do the news, yes. So our dear president, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, has been waffling about his vaccine. Do I get it? Do I not get it? I don't need to get it because I have immunity. And then he was advised by his uh, close staff that he should get the vaccine because he would be a good uh, role model for other seniors. And this is exactly what has happened this morning. Um, after his uh, ritual morning press conference, our president received his first dose of Astra. Seneca vaccine. And um, this is good news for him, I suppose. It's good news for anyone that gets vaccinated. But it is important to make sure that our leaders are, are good role models for the rest of the population so that they act accordingly. And, um, and we'll leave that at that. There's not much more that I can tell you about this. Um, but I do want to talk about this other bit of news, which is a little bit unsettling. While things seem to be settled, uh, slowing down considerably here in the state of Jalisco as they relate to COVID-19 cases, Health Undersecretary Hugo lopez Gatel, remember Hugo lopez Gatel, he did warn of 10 states in Mexico that are registering an increase in cases. The states are Baja California Sur, Chihuahua, Mexico City, Colima, Durango, the state of Mexico, Morelos, Quintana Roo, Tlaxcala, and Nayarit. He clarified, he said, this is an early warning, not an alert, uh, as it is still too early to call it a third wave. But of course, we are mindful of these news, given the fact that the states of Nayarit and Colima surround our own state from above and below respectively. Let us hope, hope, hope that we don't get a major increase in cases moving forward. Um, as I was mentioning earlier today, no, I was not mentioning, I was thinking of mentioning it. See, I'm already having a 420 day and I have, have not even touched the darn thing. It has become increasingly challenging to find news this time of year because of all the activity going on surrounding the political campaigns. Uh, most reporters are out there tracking promises and deals made by the candidates and these promises they may or may not be able to keep once the elections are over. But this particular news item caught my attention. Two artists that work on the Malecon as the human sculptures had their permits revoked, allegedly, because they were not in favor of the prevailing political party, which is the Movimiento Ciudadano. The artists claim that the local government has threatened them to either support the Movimiento Ciudadano all the way or lose their job. They have lost their job. And of course, we know that there are two sides of every story. We know that local papers are not particularly brilliant at reporting two sides of any given story. So, um, but it's still unsettling to read that the local government might be um, putting so much pressure on people to support their own party that people, or particularly in this case, regular citizens, should not be able to do their work only because they have different political alliances. Um, let's hope that that's not really, really the case. Um, and of course, if we read more about this, I'll be happy to let you know. Let me take a quick look at your comments before we move on to the rest of the broadcast. Um, actually, even before I look at your comments, um, it is it is difficult to to get interesting news <laughs> happening because, I mean, I could tell you news about what such and such candidate is promising or news about what such and such candidate is promising. But that would not even be newsworthy because these things we don't even know that they're happening i will share something that i think is really great news although i have not read it anywhere but i got this from a very good source a friend of mine um and i'm almost giving away the the taco tuesday feature but a friend of mine who has a restaurant on calle francia 
revealed to me that he was approached by city officials yesterday who told him that today, on this very day, reconstruction of Francia Street in Colonia Versailles is going to begin. Now, what does that mean? That means that the entire street is going to be um, broken down and repaved with wider sidewalks as it has been done in Calle España, for example. Um, uh, uh, sidewalks that will allow for outdoor seating and that will allow for handicap accessible um, folks, uh, well, folks that are on a wheelchair to be able to get in and out and explore the neighborhood. This is something that is going to take a while to accomplish, but once Calle Francia is given um, the the beauty makeover as other streets in Versailles um, have had already, it's going to become a really wonderful place to hang out. And of course, that'll come with, you know, other kinds of consequences like, you know, increasing rents and this and that and the other. But for the time being, let us rejoice that um, yet another street in Versailles is about to get started with its beauty makeover. Again, I have not seen this printed anywhere. I reached out to a couple of connections that I have in City Hall. They did not return my call. But I think, again, that this is a reliable source of information, so it'll be a good thing to look at. Now, let me take a quick look at your comments, and we'll take it from there. Shoom, bada bim, bam, boom, bam, boom, bum, bum. Bronica wishes happy 420 to everyone. Thank you very much, Bronica. Uh, <laughs> Angelo says, good morning from high on a hill, uh, which is not the same thing as good morning from a hill, comma, high. Um, but I'm not going to go there. Let's see. Today is a bad day for a diet. Absolutely agreed. Um, Luna conducting my performance evaluation. Oh, no, she's like giving up on that. Look at her. She's like, ah, fuck it. Uh, we're not going to evaluate anybody today. She's just like, I'm having a mellow day. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else we have. Shum bada boom bum bum. Live video has ended. Uh, no. Oh, James got kicked off. I am sorry to hear that. Um, um, we're still no. We're still broadcasting. We're still broadcasting. <laughs> Don't frighten me. Uh, let's see. That is not good to play politics with artists. You know, Dave. It's it's tricky, and I'm going to tell you why. Because local sources. Local news sources are not well groomed in this business of two sides of every story. So to get a comprehensive news item, a balanced piece from local reporters is 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 very difficult. It's very difficult. So and we know that Noticias PV is which is where the news came from. They're very good at at um, a sharing this kind of reporting where, you know, somebody told us that this happened or somebody complained about this or somebody complained about that. There is seldom a reaction, you know, or, you know, we we heard it from the artists. So then we got in touch with the city officials to get their point of view. You know, these things don't happen. And I think they should. Unfortunately, you know, when the news, when I'm just, when we're just um, broadcasting what we see, you know, you have to go with what you have. And sometimes I feel reluctant to share these things because, you know, they don't provide the quality of reporting that you deserve. But um, if that was the case, that they were kicked out because of their political beliefs, yes, you are correct. It is absolutely unfortunate and unfair and wrong. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Is it going to be all the streets in Versailles? Angelica, my suspicion is that eventually all the streets in Versailles, as you know, all the streets in the city for that matter, will be brought to a new uh, standard of, of quality. I do know that what, in order to get Francia done, I think uh, the city had to change the, oh, what is the term? Um, the, the label of the street from re residential to business, because obviously having the, the wider, um, the wider sidewalks will allow many businesses to be able to provide seating outside. So it could turn into a really, really cute throughway. And of course, we know that Calle Francia cuts Versailles in half. So it's a long, beautiful street. But it's difficult to tell at this stage of the game if all the streets 
will be transformed and when. But Francia, I'm very happy. I'm very happy about Earl. Happy 420 from Provincetown. Happy 420 from Puerto Vallarta. It's great to see you here. Um, and David is right. Dave is right. Calle Francia is becoming foodie heaven. Or let me, if I may, um, say that Calle Francia is now foodie heaven or its surroundings because there's just so many things to pick. It's not even funny. Uh, let's see what else. Shangadabum bum bum. I like this. My late father always used to say, believe nothing of what you hear and only half of what you see. Or read, you know. Um, anyhow, this is what we have for like serious news and everything else that we have for today is going to be show and tell between Taco Tuesday and this other business of decoration that's going on in the city. Somebody's redecorating our trees. What's going on? Let's find out after the weather. <laughs> the weather says grab your fracking sunglasses. I love it. It is 26 degrees. Feels like 28, and Fahrenheit, that would be 79 degrees. Uh, humidity is at 51%, and uh, we're, our weather, bleh, 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 420 slip. Um, our weather forecast calls for a clear, through, uh, a clear day throughout the day with a high temperature of 31, low temperature 19. We're not cracking 20, uh, 32 degrees just yet. Um, Wednesday uh, will be clear through the day with a high temperature of 31, low temperature 19, and then, oh, that will be, t that will be tomorrow, yeah, duh. And Thursday, it'll be partly cloudy, ah, high temperature of 32. Partly cloudy through the day on Thursday, so we cracked another degree. Now we're going up to 32 degrees as a high temperature. Low temperature will be 20 degrees. So that is that. Now, let us talk about redecoration because this is starting to happen. Have you looked around to find that all of a sudden somebody put yellow flowers on a few trees around the city? Because they, they are so bright and colorful that they absolutely look artificial. And I bet you've been walking around the city and all of a sudden you're like, you do a double take and you're like, well, what the fuck? Those, <laughs> what the fuck? Those, those yellow uh, flowers were not there before. Well, let me tell you that the flowers are, um, uh, well, the trees are, we, uh, they have a colloquial name. They're known as primavera trees. And uh, they are actually of the ros rosodendron genus. They are flowering trees that are cultivated as ornamental trees uh, for their numerous large yellow flowers. Um, and their wood is sometimes used to make furniture. Uh, these trees are central, are native to Central America and Southern Mexico, and they're beautiful, and and uh, and they're very common here. And Claude is right. Uh, the yellow flowers seem to dance as they fall down from the trees. So this is the kind of business that you look at these beautiful trees and you think to yourself, "Oh man, the next day I'm walking down the street, I'm bringing my camera because I'm going to take some photos." And you know what? The, 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 the flowers come down in a matter of days. I mean, these trees bloom, and in a matter of days, the whole show is over. So it is, it is quite a, a beautiful sight. If, this is, if you're new to Puerto Vallarta and new to the tropics, uh, this might be something that you've never experienced before, of course. Uh, we call them primavera trees, or they're, they're called primavera trees because they're usually blooming around springtime. But again, they pop up those beautiful flowers. The beautiful flowers stay on the trees for like a week, and then they go, meh, got to go down. And, and that's it. That's it. And that's what happens once a year. And they are absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. So if you get a chance to walk around the city um, and are going to be looking for primavera trees, you maybe have two or three days left and then they'll disappear. But right now, even even looking up at the hills, you will see these gorgeous patches of yellow everywhere. Um, but they don't last. That's just the nature of the beast. And now, now we move on to Taco Tuesday because it is that time of the day. And I want to tell you that for Taco Tuesday today, we have been exploring 
um, we've explored tacos al pastor. We have explored tacos de carnitas. We have explored um, a street a vendor that has tacos de cabeza that has all of those mysterious, you know, parts of the cow that we, some of us love so much. But living in a sea, uh, in an ocean destination, um, there's fish tacos and, and seafood tacos. And I remember when I first arrived uh, in Puerto Vallarta, I, I, I'd never lived, you know, in, in a seafood destination or by the ocean. And I used to think to myself, who the hell orders fish tacos? I mean, that sounded so incredibly irreverent to me. But of course, to spend a few days in Puerto Vallarta and you begin to realize that seafood or fish tacos are essential, essential um, to our city and essential to anyone's exploration of tacos. And I hate to use the word fish tacos because there's so much more than fish, actual fish uh, being used in tacos that come from the sea. There's also other creatures. So today we explore um, a seafood taco place or actually we go back to a place that we had already been to Cayo Blanco, we visited because it is located here in Versailles. Um, when we visited uh, Cayo Blanco, we visited it for the Versailles for Foodies map. But knowing that they have a gorgeous selection of seafood tacos, we simply had to go back and give them the proper treatment. This is a beautiful restaurant on Calle Francia that is run by my dear friend, Chef Cesar Barajas, and it is a total family affair. Here we see Cesar with his um, much shorter mom by his side and his even shorter girlfriend by his side. And uh, also working there is his sister and his sister's, I don't know if he's a, a husband or a boyfriend, but it is truly, truly a family affair. The restaurant is very small. It's very cozy which means that you are going to get personalized attention at all times. And what is beautiful about the food that Chef Cesar offers at his restaurant is that his grooming as a chef included a one-year chapter in Spain at a seafood destination. And uh, one of the things that he learned while he was um, at the other side of the Atlantic is that presentation is everything and the way he meticulously prepares and assembles each one of his tacos results in these beautiful statements that are just gorgeous to look at. And then when it's time to try them, they are just absolutely delicious. We are looking at his Versailles tacos, which are made with octopus, served over a layer of, um, of avocado puree, and they are garnished. Uh, with different uh, fresh things and chingaderas. They were absolutely delicious. These, uh, oh, and here's something else that is fascinating. These are another kind of octopus tacos. But if you look at this photograph on the on the top left-hand side, you see a piece of bone, and that is a beef bone marrow serving. And bone marrow is yet another delicacy. That is very popular. Some people cringe at the thought of eating bone marrow, but bone marrow is absolutely delicious. So you think that this place is truly, truly expensive because of the presentation, and it isn't. It's not the cheapest or the least expensive fish taco place you can go to here in Puerto Vallarta, but you are getting a very beautifully presented experience at a price that is not, not all that high. And this is what I have to tell you about, about the venue. Let me show you what their minute and a half treatment turned out like.
So of course, I was visiting with with uh, the chef and his family yesterday, and he's the one that told me uh, the news about Calle Francia. So if he was visited by the authorities, and the authorities said, we're going to start digging your street, then it must be true. Of course, we still don't know what end of Calle Francia they're going to be working on first or what's going on. But of course, this is near my home, and I'll be so very happy to keep you posted. And now let me just take a quick look at... Um, at your final comments before we get on with our 420 day. Uh, let's see what we have. Uh, let's see. I see a lot of comments about flowers in town. Thank you very much. Paula says, I love all the colors of PV. That makes two of us. Absolutely. Uh, tacos de Canasta are coming, James. And there's a couple of places that I, that I love to eat tacos de Canasta. And Angelica, I, you know, between going for disco dancing and tacos de cabeza, something tells me that we're going to gain a few pounds when you next visit Puerto Vallarta. Um, let's see what else. Uh, for those that love tacos and have Netflix, there's an excellent docu-series called Taco Chronicles. We've talked about this in the past, Brett, and it was actually thanks to the Taco Chronicles. I will for, actually, not thanks to. At first, I used to think, well, you know, how could I put together something as tasty and sexy as what they do in Taco Chronicles? Because, I mean, the Taco Chronicles are beautifully filmed. But um, it became clear to me that, you know, the connection here is not so much the quality of the cinematography. The connection has more to do with just knowing where to find awesome tacos here in Puerto Vallarta. So, yes, we are big, big fans of that documentary series. Let's see what else we have. Uh, Marisma fish tacos are definitely on my list. We'll get to them at some point. Uh, <laughs> too much taco Tuesday will make walking Wednesday become waddle Wednesday. Well, just look at me. I'm going to be waddling in a little while for tomorrow. Uh, Dave gives high notes for Cayo Blanco. I am so very happy that you've enjoyed it. And I'm even more grateful, Dave, because you mentioned coffee and headlines to the chef. And for me, when I go to restaurants and or venues and and the owner says to me, well, we these people came because of you. It just it just gives me such satisfaction that we are fulfilling our goal to create all these connections between us and what's available here in our destination. Uh, let's see what else we have. You eat with your eyes first. Absolutely. And Muchacho Borracho also loves pulpo. I love octopus. And uh, even after I watch the documentary on Netflix, I still love octopus. And I will continue to love octopus, um, at least until my doctor says you can eat octopus, which will never happen. So there. Uh, Logan also endorses Cesar. They work together at, um, at, at Casa Cupula. Yes, uh, Cesar was uh, in charge of the Casa Cupula restaurant, the, the, the hotel for some years and uh, and I like your comment of, of saying that he's one of the most mellow drama free cool headed chefs I have ever known I love that um, more more high notes from Dave thank you very much for recommending Sherry is a bone marrow fan and so is my dear friend Paul who is flying back from uh, DC tomorrow safe travels baby uh, tuetano is what we call bone marrow in Spanish, and uh, and bone marrow is just it's just just yummy. And the chef was telling me yesterday how it's challenging to find it. So we should be grateful that there is a restaurant that actually serves such a specific dish here in town. Um, -da -bum -bum -bum. <laughs> it's only breakfast time, and I'm so hungry now. Welcome to my world, Paula. This happens to me every time I'm preparing Taco Tuesday. I am so grateful that you guys proposed and suggested that we do Taco Tuesdays because I have enjoyed this venture since we started it a few weeks ago. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Um, Michal is zoned in on Taco Versalles. Say when, my dear friend. Um, Michal is another one of my next door neighbors. She lives just one block away. I'll be happy to come with you because it is a beautiful, beautiful restaurant. Um... Brett asks, why does Cayo Blanco mean white key when Cayo means it 
fell. Darn that Google Translate. I really couldn't tell you. Um, I really couldn't tell you, but Cayo is the name given to that specific type of muscle. Uh, I don't even know if it's a muscle. Uh, in Spanish, we call it Cayo de Hacha, which is one of the seafood items that one can order at, uh, at a seafood restaurant. Um, was that garnished with watermelon radish? Yes, it was, Mark. And yet, yet another thing that I love about, about Chef Cesar, he does not necessarily garnish with expected or predictable ingredients. He's, the, the detail which, which he assembles each one of those tacos is, is just beautiful. Um, Raymond says, I hope they do to Calle Francia what they did to Calle España by Barrio Bistro. Still stones but much smoother. Raymond, I have good news. That's exactly what is going to happen. Uh, let's see what else. Thank you for that correction, Dave. Cayo refers to scallops. I knew it was some kind of sea creature, but I was not entirely certain as to, as to which one. And um, thank you very much for that, Logan. Um, let's see what else. Reed ate at Marisco's Ocho Tostadas, another favorite. Um, I don't go to the one at the Marina, but there's one here near Versailles. There's another one near the stadium. And the one at the stadium is my favorite one. They are definitely going to be places where we're going to be looking at fish tacos um, eventually for Taco Tuesday. Um, oh, that is a fun fact. The word octopus in Japanese is taco. I didn't know that. I love it. Um, let's see what else we have. Oh, you guys have all kinds of wonderful, um, wonderful comments about this. I'm so grateful for that. Cesar helped organize my wedding. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, Raymond, seriously, I'll have to go to that restaurant tomorrow. <laughs> we were missing you and your puns, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, bada bing, says Rita Myers, and I think it is a good time to wrap our broadcast for today. As always, I am so grateful of your time and your company, your suggestions and your comments. They nurture everything. And of course, I forgot to show you that, um, that Cayo Blanco is now in our map, which continues to be a map that is only exclusive to... Uh, supporting members. If you are not a supporting member yet, consider supporting our broadcast. It's not a lot of money and it helps us a great deal in making these things happen. So if you're hungry, if it's um, if 420 is your thing and you want to have some tacos, I wish you a 420 day. I wish you a great day full of food and happiness and great friends and company. And most important, I wish you a healthy patient, loving, caring, positive day. And I hope to see you again tomorrow for Walking Wednesday. And if not tomorrow, sometime in the near future. Have a great day.